I'm Burley Mullins, and welcome to the Great Mead Project. Welcome to Method of the Meatness. I'm Burley Mullins, and as I alluded to in the intro, this is the Great Mead Project. Uh, you may or may not have already seen some of the videos from the other meat makers participating in this, but it's a collaboration of just about every mead tuber agreeing on the basic uh, layout of a recipe. Um, in this case, we decided on either clover or wildflower honey, corn of some kind, mangoes, and uh, hot peppers. Actually, I think we just specified peppers. It didn't necessarily have to be hot. I went with hot. One of the other mead tubers, maybe doing the most, will have um, a more full rundown of uh, the precepts behind this. I've got a pot getting ready to boil in the back. Uh, I'm going to be, for my corn ingredient, using corn silk. Um, it's about one cup um, uncompressed corn silk per gallon. Uh, this is three cups. This is what it looks like when you compress it down and get it ready to steep. I tried to do some research in the nitrogen content and yeast available nitrogen in uh, corn silk. There's no research for that. I did, however, find that uh, no matter what, no matter what dosage that they gave, uh, they couldn't find a lethal dose or a harmful dose. So that's really cool. I'm going to be uh, slicing uh, three mangoes, one mango per gallon. This is a three gallon carboy. And I'm going to be using uh, a mixture of uh, poblano and habanero peppers. <laughs> this should be fun. Come along for the ride. All right. I got one gallon of water near to boiling, and I put the entire three cups of corn silk uh, into steep right after I turned it off. Um, that's uh, had the chance to steep only a few minutes. It's, uh, it's basically a tea at this point. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the carboy. I already have a bit of buffer water in there so that the, there's not as big of a temperature shock. You know, I've got some thermal mass in there to handle the addition. It smells of like corn and grass. Uh, it's a fairly expected smell, I think, um, given that it is plant matter that is not actually the corn itself. So it, 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 it's a fairly expected smell. I have uh, had a couple of test batches of just corn silk tea, just to see how it goes. Uh, and I enjoy it. Um, I might add it to my routine because I ordered way more than I needed because I had no idea uh, the, um, what's, uh, the opposite of dense. I mean, it's still density, but you know, how I guess light it was uh, given the volume uh, or voluminous it was given the weight. <laughs> so I ordered a bit more than I needed, uh, but I did not know that at the time. Alright, um, <clears throat> that's about half the liquid that we need. Some of it has escaped from the boil. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add the honey and get it mixed in at this point. And then we'll go ahead and add the uh, fruits. Because, yes, the... Uh, Peppers of fruits. Vegetables don't exist, they're a social construct. Once again, super pleased that I got a scale that can handle up to 55 pounds. <laughs> very, very helpful. Oh, this is the first video that my uh, three gallon carboys have uh, appeared in to actually have meat in them, other than my, um, you know, overview of my fermenters video, which I'll link right up there. Um, if you want a uh, three-gallon fermenter uh, from the same maker, I can put a, an affiliate link below um, through Homebrew Ohio. Um, it doesn't add anything to the cost of the transaction for you. It just puts a little money in my pocket, helps out the channel, and helps out Homebrew Ohio, um, who have so graciously added me to their affiliate program. And I'm shooting for between, like, mmm seven and a half and eight pounds of honey, which given the size of this funnel might take a bit. So I'll probably fast forward through this bit. 
this is one huge advantage to those big mouth bubblers, is uh, <laughs> I don't have to worry about funneling the honey in. Just pour it right in. Of course, there have been some drawbacks to those big mouth bubblers, uh, the little big mouth bubblers. Uh, if you'd like to see me do a full, um, you know, now that I've gotten a chance to use them a lot on the channel, uh, if you'd like to see me do a full breakdown of what I do and don't like about the big mouth bubblers, uh, let me know in the comments below. So I forgot to tear the scale. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's sitting on the scale for show right now, because I also did not write down the initial weight. That's what you get for being, uh, you know, impatient. Either way, I should end up with roughly seven and a half, eight pounds. All right, I've got at least seven and a half pounds of honey in here. Probably a little closer to eight, but not definitely. Gonna go ahead and get that mixed in. I used to pick these up and shake them. Um, and frankly, I don't want to. I am capable, but I have no desire to do so. Okay, that should have all of the honey mixed in. I've got one mango per gallon. And I'm just gonna slice these up um, roughly uh, and just leave them in for primary. Um, I am going to remove the skin. You do not want to include mango skin in literally anything you make. It has a chemical irritant in it uh, that is similar in composition to what appears in poison ivy. Uh, you don't want to mess with that. Okay, now that that far more labor-intensive process than I thought was going to be <laughs> is done with, I'm gonna tackle the uh, hot peppers. I'm going to de-vein and de-seed uh, two habaneros and two poblano peppers. Um, <clears throat> this is actually my first time using fresh peppers for this. I uh, typically use um, dried peppers. Um, I have loved the results from using dried. Um, I believe dried poblanos are anchos. They're called anchos uh, when they're dried. Uh, and that's what I typically use. But uh, let's see how uh, let's see how we get on get on with the fresh. And I'm going to completely de-vein and de-seed these. Um, I want a subtle kick. I don't want you know, I don't want wild heat, and I have found that, um, you know, typically, uh, you know, for um, primary, like one, uh, one pepper per uh, three quarts. I used to use three quart fermenters because um, they were repurposed cider bottles. Um, you know, it gets the job done. You know, you gotta remember both water and alcohol are solvents. And uh, turns out they take to capsaicin pretty well. Remember uh, hot pepper safety? Uh, do not touch anything on your person or somebody else's person uh, before washing your hands thoroughly. Originally, I wanted to do this recipe with uh, ancho and cascabel peppers, but... <clears throat> You make do with what you can get. And my usual source of peppers did not have any dried peppers, let alone a selection for me to peruse. Okay, and that's it for the peppers. Gonna add more water till we get to the three gallon mark and add in our yeast. All right, for my yeast, I decided to go with, uh, for the first time ever, actually, a liquid yeast. Um, and this is uh, the Y yeast, yes, 4783. Um, and I went with it just because it seemed to have the properties I wanted for this. Uh, you know, between um, expected uh, 
flavors and, uh, you know, tolerance. I have never worked with a liquid yeast on my own. Worked with a couple uh, when I was brewing beer with some friends in college. Um, but they always made those decisions. I don't know anything about beer yeast. Uh, just about any, I don't know much about beer yeast. Uh, it's not my go-to for making mead. I tend to find wine yeast has more of the properties that I'm after. Just trying to get the yeast uh, mixed in a little bit. It smells kind of wild, if I'm being totally honest. The gravity that's going on in there right now is uh, 1.094. I will be adding more, uh, I will be adding yeast nutrient to this as time goes on, uh, just to make sure that this yeast is happy, healthy, and has enough yeast available nitrogen to do the job. But I suspect I'll see this one start bubbling pretty soon. I'm Burley Mullins, and this has been part one of the Great Mead Project. And I am Method to the Meadness. I'll see you next time.